Yet we're going for it and humbly submit having good confidence in landing it. Well, this was a pretty bold statement from the CEO of Blue Origin regarding the successful landing of the new Glenn rocket on its very first launch. It's unclear whether this is trustworthy or just an exaggerated statement intended to capture public attention. However, the first move by SpaceX's competitor was to unveil a barge that actually resembles a copy of SpaceX's drone ship. Usually, the outcome of such copies doesn't turn out as successful, as we've seen with those rockets in China. So, how about Blue Origin's copy? All right, we're all familiar with the two major competitors in space, Blue Origin and SpaceX. The two companies are notorious for their intense rivalry and heated conflicts between their founders. But in reality, we can already see who's ahead. While Blue Origin only launched its first suborbital rocket in 2015 with just a handful of launches since, SpaceX has launched the reusable orbital Falcon rockets with the number of launches and landings reaching hundreds, nearly 400 launches to be precise. So has Blue Origin just lost this race or what? Of course not. As long as the company's still in operation, there's always a chance to catch up. And Jeff Bezos always thinks this way. And if he can't make something new, he decides to do what SpaceX has already done, using that very strategy to potentially one-up his rival. When looking at the render of New Glenn, we can immediately recognize a Falcon 9, although it's slightly larger in size. Since we have yet to see the fully completed New Glenn, it's still not possible to make a completely fair comparison. However, the company has unveiled something essential that's a lot similar to SpaceX's setup for lowering costs through reusable rockets that land after launch, a barge. This vehicle is going to be crucial to the success of landing New Glenn's booster, as proudly stated by their CEO Dave Limp. Recently, on September 5th, this ship appeared at Port Canaveral in Florida. Finally, after a long wait, we can see the shape of Blue Origin's mysterious barge and how much it looks like SpaceX's creations. The landing barge for Blue Origin's new Glenn rocket named Jacqueline is also named after the mom of Blue Origin's founder, Jeff Bezos. The barge is significantly larger than SpaceX's well-known drone ships, measuring 115 meters in length and 45 in width, while SpaceX's ship are approximately 92 by 46 meters. To explain the special size of this barge, Dave Limp specifically mentioned a comparison to the landing pad for New Shepard. Even though it has a landing pad similar in size to the New Shepard, Jacqueline is designed to receive New Glenn, a rocket three times taller with many more engines. This is explained by the physical principle of the center of gravity, similar to how it's easier to balance a broom than a pencil. This is also why the new CEO feels pretty confident about the first landing attempt with his baby rocket rocket. One of the standout features of the barge is the presence of four large structures, two on each side of the platform. While their specific functions have not yet been officially clarified, they are speculated to serve purposes ranging from power gen to equipment storage and aiding in the booster securement process after landing. However, when compared overall, SpaceX's drone ship is just more streamlined than Jacqueline. This simplicity allows them to avoid heavy damage in case bad incidents occur during the rocket landing. To be honest, from the get-go, New Glenn's planned landing system was a lot more complex complex and massive. In 2018, Blue Origin purchased an old roll-off cargo ship to convert it into a landing platform. For several years, leading up to 2022, the ship underwent refurbishment at the port to prepare it for a new role in landing the first stage of its launch vehicles. The plan was for the boosters to get recovered from long-range missions launched from Complex 36 at Cape Canaveral, and the ship stabilized hydrodynamically as it moved to the Atlantic. Blue Origin chose this approach from the outset, believing it would provide the best opportunity to recover the first day successfully. For example, the ship was to be outfitted with stabilization technology to improve recovery success in rough seas and keep launches on schedule. However, Blue Origin's thinking has changed somewhat. In June 2022, renowned space journal Eric Berger tweeted that it appeared Blue Origin would use the same contractor SpaceX had previously used to modify a large drone ship for landing New Glenn's first stage, replacing the previous ship-based landing approach. This tweet was a response to another post that delved into Blue Origin's future operations, which mentioned that the company had selected Latimelia of Louisiana to build its autonomous drone landing platform. 
Of course, there were no longer any doubt that this would be born from what would be a sibling to SpaceX's drone ships. Eventually, in August 2022, Blue Origin abandoned the plan to use the ship as a landing platform, and the vessel was towed toward the port of Brownsville for dismantling. At that time, Port Director Clark Merritt explained that the conversion had progressed too far to return the ship to cargo service, which is why it got scrapped. He did not specify why the conversion was halted. A Blue Origin spokesperson stated that the company remains committed to a safe and cost-effective approach to space access and, after careful consideration, decided to move away from using the ship as a landing solution. Blue Origin likely found this specific approach raised concerns related to cost scheduling and other complexities. At that time, Blue Origin did not reveal what alternative options they were considering, but rumors that they were leaning towards a barge version similar to the ones used by SpaceX grew increasingly certain among the public. To be fair, Elon wasn't the first to come up with the idea of launching a rocket from a coastal launch site and landing it on a ship at sea. In fact, Blue Origin beat him to the punch by filing a patent for landing rockets at sea in 2010. However, SpaceX successfully challenged this patent, citing that others had proposed the idea earlier. Since then, no matter which company does a sea landing, Blue Origin no longer has legal grounds to pursue any litigation, a tactic that they had used quite often to hinder SpaceX's development. After all these years, what Blue Origin fought for over a decade ago is now being realized. But they're too ambitious. Jeff Bezos even wants to achieve a successful landing on the first launch of New Glenn. The reality is that the first attempt is unlikely to be that smooth, as damage to any landing platform is a real risk. With SpaceX, we've witnessed several launches where boosters collided with a drone ship and blew up. In the first few attempts with New Glenn, we could very well see similar results. New Glenn's launch and landing process involves several critical steps designed to ensure the safe recovery and reuse of the rocket's first stage booster. After the booster separates from the second stage during ascent, it undergoes a series of maneuvers to reorient itself for re-entry into the Earth's atmosphere. Using a combination of aerodynamics and controlled thrust, the booster slows down and adjusts its trajectory for a precision landing. As the booster descends, it deploys its landing legs and adjusts its attitude using fins and wing-like strakes to ensure accurate positioning. The booster's goal is to land upright on Blue Origin's landing barge, which will be stationed in the Atlantic. The barge, designed specifically for this recovery operation, provides a stable platform to catch the returning rocket, even after a high-speed atmospheric re-entry. Once the booster lands on the barge, the platform plays a role in securing it for transport. The recovered booster is then transported back to Port Canaveral, where it undergoes inspection and refurbishment in preparation for reuse on future missions, aligning with Blue Origin's goal of reducing launch costs through the reuse of rocket components. All this was part of Blue Origin's plan for New Glenn's first launch to carry the payload to Mars, the Escobade mission, in October of this year. Unfortunately, on September 6th, NASA and Blue Origin announced a delay postponing to the spring of next year. Honestly, I'm just starting to lose patience with this company. It seems like there was excitement when Blue Origin continuously revealed new hardware images, but the recurring word here is delay. This change in schedule underscores the challenges Blue Origin faces as they ramp up production on New Glenn, which is already four years behind schedule. Last month, the company experienced two major test failures, resulting in the destruction of New Glenn hardware planned for the rocket's second and third flights. Blue Origin will now shift focus to launching a prototype of the Blue Ring transfer vehicle on New Glenn's first flight with the goal of testing the electronics, avionics, and other systems on the vehicle. Blue Origin is now targeting the first half of November for launch. This test will also be the first of three certification flights for New Glenn, allowing the vehicle to qualify to carry national security payloads for the U.S. Space Force. However, the Mars mission in partnership with NASA is also a big one, as we need to seize the opportunity when the Earth moves closest to Mars. For Escapade, that mission could launch in spring of next year, although the Mars window only opens every 18 to 24 months. There are complex orbital paths that could allow a payload launched in spring of next year to still get to the Red Planet. There is also a possibility that NASA and Blue Origin may just ultimately wait for the next Mars window, opening in November of 2026, to launch that mission. Despite the delays and shifts, LIMP encouraged employees to keep a sense of urgency moving forward. We can't take our foot off the gas here, LIMP wrote in an email. Everyone's work to get us to NG-1 flight this year is critical, and I'm so appreciative of everyone's relentless dedication to make this happen. And that's it for today's episode. Thanks for watching, and see you next time.